before the surgery, a few days before the surgery, in fact, uh, they, uh, the medical staff gave me a little handbook, and I think it said on the front, delirium. And I looked at it and thought, well, not going to happen to me. Because I, you know, I had done research before the surgery. I was watching open heart surgery online because I really wanted to know what it looked like. I knew they were going to stop my heart. I knew all that stuff that was going to go on. So I thought, poof, I am so totally prepared that this will never happen to me. And then so my experience of the surgery was tremendous. So I'm back in the intensive care unit and I wake up and I begin to think, I can't figure out where I am. And I, I thought, I'm in a motel in Morden, Manitoba. It's called the Heartland Motel. Don't know why. And I thought, I, I can't be in a motel. Uh, and then I, I, I looked across the room and I was convinced that I saw a car parked there with its headlights on. And I thought, I'm on the fifth floor. There can't be a car parked there, but I have to get out of this hospital. And so I said to myself, I'm leaving. And I, also, and I looked down and I'm full of tubes and connected to many things in the bed. And I knew I was just wearing a Johnny shirt. I'm not sure what you guys called them, but it was like an open back thing. No shoes, nothing, just bare feet. And I thought, I don't care. I'm getting out of this hospital. And then when, when this began to happen, I, I couldn't understand it. I was upset. I was confused. I, I mean, it's a good thing I didn't do something stupid like try to pull out some of the IVs and such that were connected to me because I was really kind of lost. One of the nurses came by and was trying to pull me back to earth like I was a balloon floating away. The physical contact was helping to pull the balloon back to earth because I was, I was really gone for some points. Like I was, I was on a very long string and the balloon was blowing in a very fierce wind. My, so my wife arrives and I'm totally righteous with her. Ellen, I got to get out of this place. And my son was there with her and at that point he was 19. And he really got upset because he had never seen me in this kind of state. And he was afraid, like quite afraid, that I was gone. So he comes to me and says, Dad, count my fingers. So he's very deliberate with this, helping me to focus on. And he would say to me, Dad, where are you? What, what's happened to you? Why are you here? Uh, what day is it? So he went through all that that he'd seen the nurse do with me and that helped to to pull me down and to pull me back to earth and that made quite a difference for me. I had no idea that delirium was even possible. My son, I think, if he was here, he might tell you how frightened he was because I was so gone, so not myself. I had no idea that delirium was even possible. I, uh, and I, I'm a researcher by profession, so I pay a lot of attention to things, but I missed this. That's an interesting question. Um, it's certainly important that loved ones know about it because if they come to visit their, the person they love in the recovery room and this is, they're in this kind of a state, to be aware that there is a distortion of perception on the part of the patient. Uh, and to be, uh, to be caring about that, uh, to not argue with the person, to not try to talk them out of it, but to connect them to where they are in the time that they, they're loved. You know me, I'm your wife, I'm your son, we're here, you're getting better, don't worry about it. So that was, I think, really important.